So friends, welcome to the 215th session of Legal Empowerment through Interaction Lecture Series. Uh, we have been uh, 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 discussing and deliberating our different uh, uh, topics of uh, law and allied issues. Today, we have a face to a cause in the sense like I mean, uh, a topic which has not been, I mean, uh, we have been shying ourselves from uh, discussing the elephant in the room, but today we are not. And uh, this wonderful speaker, we were introduced a couple of years ago when uh, uh, she addressed uh, uh, Calicut Bar Association. Uh, when, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Justice Kauzar Adapagat, uh, Dr. Kauzar Adapagat was the additional judge at that point of time. And uh, Manohan Lal is very much here. He was then the secretary of the Calicut Bar Association. And uh, this is something, I mean, I'm sure that uh, uh, you all would be uh, uh, in interested to discuss in the sense like, it is high time we discuss issues with which we are all concerned and uh, uh, let us not uh, uh, cocoon ourselves or, 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 or insulate ourselves from the ground realities. Uh, we welcome Kalki Subramaniam to this uh, uh, platform. Um, uh, thank you very much for accepting our invitation and to address us. And uh, for the introductory remarks, we have another wonderful speaker who has been addressing us and she is now presently the additional solicitor general of India, Aishwarya Bhattiji. Namaste. And uh, indeed, we are privileged to have uh, Justice Ram Kumar sir, Justice Ramushan sir, and Justice uh, uh, Jishankar Nambiar sir with us. And uh, all of you wonderful participants who have been part and parcel of this wonderful journey of uh, legal empowerment, interaction, and uh, um, enlightenment, I would say. So without I mean, this being a thoroughly informal platform, I mean, we don't waste time on anything. But today, we have the speaker who has... Uh, addressed almost, uh, I mean, uh, 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 who's known internationally. And uh, for the introductory remarks, may I request uh, uh, Aishwarya Bhatti, ma'am, please. My warm good evening and regards and pronouns to all. It uh, gives me immense uh, privilege and honor to be here, 200 plus. Wow, Shamji, that is a big number. I was not aware that it has been going with such great guns. Of course, I am aware. I I have I've been missing in action for some time, but I am aware of the work that has been happening. So it is indeed a privilege and honor for me to be back here with all my friends uh, and senior colleagues. Uh, this wonderful platform of uh, uh, of discussion, exchange of thoughts, ideas, uh, being open to all kinds of discussions, and I, I feel privileged that I am here again with all of you. Well, the topic for discussion, I, it's, it's wonderful to know that we have somebody who is going to discuss the nitty gritties of it. But as uh, lawyers, I think it is imp imperative for us, us to understand how we have gone from a culture that did not hold uh, the LGBT plus community in any kind of taboo, whether it is, it is from our, uh, our uh, scriptures, the art, the culture, that is de depicted in uh, the temples of Khajuraho, Sun Temple uh, at Konark, Ramayan, Mahabharat. How have we gone from a civilization that uh, understood and valued inclusion, holistic inclusion, to the times when, uh, where we adopted as a, um, as a colony of the British, the the Maikale's uh, penal code, Indian penal code, where uh, we were okay after 60 years of independence, we were okay for uh, consensual sexual relationship to be criminalized as a penal offense under the IPC to a time where we are, the, the whole world has really woken up and risen to the, power, to the, the uh, equal opportunity and equal rights. Um, to all persons, irrespective of uh, their sexual orientation, irrespective of their gender. And uh, it is imperative for us to note that, uh, of course, two or three Supreme Court judgments have been path-breaking and landmark in this direction. The journey really starts with the Nas Foundation judgment of the Delhi High Court, which was unfortunately reversed by the Supreme Court where the Supreme Court did not uh, find that it was the job of the judiciary to look at uh, uh, the, the legality of Section 377 on the pretext that uh, it is only a handful of individuals and therefore 
the court would not go into it and uh, allow the legislature has to take the final call where the the writing on the wall really changed with the puttaswami judgment of privacy where the constitution bench nine judges uh, held privacy to be a fundamental right and though they were not dealing with the issue at hand but uh, a particular paragraph in the majority judgment penned by justice uh, chandrachud specifically pointed out that uh, once privacy has been recognized as a fundamental right it matters not whether it is a handful of it individuals or whether it is one citizen of the country if it is uh, violating a fundamental right then it's violating a fundamental right of course the writing on the wall was very clear uh, from that judgment onwards and it was a mere formality when uh, the ju the judgment of uh, navteej singh johar finally came uh, but in clear emphatic terms the judgment in nalsa's case recognizing uh, transgenders as the third gender and laying down the further constitutional principles and statutory mechanism for recognition of transgenders as third gender did pave way uh, the bill of course was introduced in 1914 uh, and ultimately it was only 19 uh, 2019 that the bill came to be passed into a law of transgender persons protection of rights act a lot remains to be uh, to be achieved a, a lot remains to be desired we have seen i mean kalki ji i'm sure we's going to uh, expound at length on this but from the data that is available in public domain what one understands is despite the protection of the bill where uh, you know one aspect is that the 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 bill the the act now makes sure that there is no uh, discrimination against anybody on the basis of their sexual orientation on the basis of their gender and uh, supreme court has after is supreme court uh, you know categoric exposition that article 15 where article 15 prohibits discrimination on the grounds of sex that also includes uh, sexual choices sexual orientation and not merely uh, the sex that a person with, is born with uh, but uh, the the working of the act has not really inspired confidence the data that is available in public domain shows that uh, less than 2000 people or about 2000 people have really applied for registration under the act for uh, social benefits uh, etc that have been statutorily made available by some of the states some of the states provide for um, extra social benefits ration card uh, housing schemes etc and there is a complete ban on discrimination of any kind in employment etc so a we need to understand where is it that the bill is lacking because there are huge concerns that have been raised that why should uh, why should it there be a requirement for somebody to register as a as a as a recognized third gender uh, and violating their privacy why why should there there be a stamp on that identification that that a person belongs to the third gender at the same time it is important and necessary that uh, the benefits that that the uh, that the authorities and government has made available for everyone is really made available really goes out to the masses and the you know reaches to the beneficiaries directly without being constricted in uh, in carefully constructed dams which become uh, constrictions rather than allowing free flow of the benefits these are some of the areas i'm sure kalki ji is going to uh, reflect on and as law as the community of students of law it was incumbent on all of us to understand the factual aspects of it but i do want to mention one more aspect uh, on this topic that uh, recently came th there's a judgment that was pronounced by the us supreme court on 15th of june it is a, a unanimous judgment uh penned by chief justice roberts where it, interestingly the state of philadelphia had placed embargo on a catholic service society which was uh, carrying out the work of adoption facilitating adoption of children who were abandoned who were in foster care etc for over a century and this catholic service society uh, was not allowing uh, the children that were going through ado uh, for adoption through them they were not allowing those children to be uh, sent in same sex marriages uh, uh, everyone is aware that uh, us 
uh, same sex marriages are uh, legitimate and legalized of course they have also gone through a whole process the the journey there uh, really started in the late 1960s um, it was uh, several important judgments passed by the us supreme court which led to this gain but but essentially because the us is a strong federal country it is the different uh, the laws of different states that determines what is the kind of protection and benefits that are available however uh, no discrimination in employment marriages adoption these are mandated by law um, not by a federal law but it is uniformly applicable for all uh, all states in the us so philadelphia in uh, 2018 placed an embargo on the catholic service uh, society saying that uh, wherever the money is going out of the taxpayers money it's public exchequer money so uh, the uh, the uh, the society could not discriminate between couples who were same sex couples and couples who were uh, who were heterosexual couples Hello. this uh, was challenged uh, met with the uh, a dismissal in the district court as also the philadelphia circuit the supreme court and on 15th june the judgment has come of the us supreme court it was carried in appeal by the catholic service uh, society to the us supreme court and a very interesting judgment has come in the us supreme court uh, where the supreme court specifically says that uh, even the catholic service uh, society is entitled to its first amendment right which allows the the, the catholic service society also to have um uh, freedom to uh, pursue their religious beliefs uh, and the liberty and latitude to uh, to proceed in, in accordance with their thought process and their religious beliefs so it was not the proper for the state of philadelphia to put an embargo on them because they were carrying out an activity in accordance with their social, their uh, religious and social beliefs uh, of course that uh, that judgment cannot be that there's a lot of discussion that has started it's a four day old judgment of the us supreme court which everyone understands and considers to be a uh, you know a country that they are they almost proclaim themselves to be the pall bearers of democratic values and liberalism and all inclusion but i don't think we need to look west too much i think it is important for us to start our journey from our cultural values and understand that the biggest constriction today is the social taboo the social stigma and things will not really change until each one of us really decides to change the stereotypical mindset that we have somehow along the lines uh, we have uh, we have adopted we need to shun those taboos and only then uh, we can be a nation a free liberal society how uh, india always had to be it was envisioned to be it was in fact uh, where uh, equal opportunity an equal protection of uh, laws and rights does not depend on gender sex sexual orientation preferences etc thank you very much thank you thank you very much aishra ji uh, just like uh, justice n anand venkatesh uh, recently in a judgment said that he had to do some homework to understand where he stands and how his prejudices will not affect uh, the way in which the judgment was rendered uh it was yeah, and, and for that matter this is anand uh, venkatesh is one of our family members in the sense like he used to be a, a part of little souls so um today uh, yeah as we are going to address something uh somebody who has been uh, a part and parcel of uh, 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 a debate that has been going on a, 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 the way in which uh, we would like to understand certain things uh, which otherwise would have remained uh, uh, unaddressed uh like i started of my uh, presentation when i said that uh, a face has been given to a cause kalki subramaniam ma'am over to you you let to unmute please unmute please unmute please <coughs> thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, uh great seminar among um, distinguished people i'm really honored and impressed and happy to be here as a transgender woman who grew up with my biological family at at the same time who grew up with the transgender uh people of my age and my elders i have noticed constantly uh right from my childhood and also from 
during my teenage years about the struggles mm-hmm. struggles would be a very little word that wouldn't justify the kind of life they have gone through uh the perils the obstacles the discrimination the hatred violence that the transgender community has gone through um i remember many of my friends running away to bangalore or uh, mumbai or delhi for be- uh, to have a nice life but they end- ended up as the beggars and sex workers and but i dancers and for many years they never returned and some of them never returned some of them died of hiv some of them returned as broken and broken spirits after many years um if you look at why that happened that happened because we are we are a society that is ignorant a society that is narrow minded a society that is patriarchal and hypocritical i think in a country like india a women are women are <clears throat> preyed upon women are cherished but at the same time at homes or other women respected equally like men is a big question i believe that uh, in all forums i say this i believe that the society that respects its women will respect all the genders irrespective of if it's a transgender or an intersex person transgender women or a transgender man so that is what it is all the struggles that we went through was basically the outcome of the gender imbalance that prevails in our indian society each and every transgender person in this country has been a victim of some kind of an abuse at least one one time in their life mostly it could be a sexual abuse i had gone through such incidences as well and it affects so many people lifelong and it takes a lot of time for them to actually heal and some of them don't heal at all so but how do we address this we don't have a system to address this because transgender people are helpless uneducated um unaware of their rights and people think we are unapproachable which is not true transgender people have been excluded in our society excluded in our families and we think transgender people from a very stereotype notions perspectives right from our movies in the contemporary cinema to our television images of transgender people are all scripted by chauvinistic cisgendered males or cisgendered females of course so these narratives have definitely affected transgender people if if you take for example some of the movies i can say in malayalam it's chandaputu and in tamil there are so many films and in hindi of course sangarsh and sadak and the movie style and uh, a party and all that. so many films you see which portray transgender people as clowns and sexual perverts and people with no intellect no brain i mean the odd thing is they use transgender people to insult transgender people in the film that is the tragedy about uh, um the films that are being made but fortunately that trend is changing now because we have been fighting fighting for a very long time against against this prejudice i think um, i started working for the transgender community way back in 2005 with a magazine when the mainstream media was not um was very stereotyped and narrow minded about uh, our community i started a magazine with only 200 copies where uh, all the articles about our lives our health our em- employment our homelessness our family inclusion everything was 
written by me and my colleagues, and then we, it was distributed among our friends. So that was one of the pioneering efforts that was done then. I remember I went to, I think in 2007, I had been to Faru College in Khorikhod, and um, there was another college, I forgot the name of the college. But when I, when I was invited to present a social, uh, my talk in a sociology seminar for the undergraduate students, the students looked at, at me like an alien. That was way back then. Look at the progress they, we have made in all these 15 years, especially the kind of transgender people were unable to live in the state, in the Kerala state, 10 years ago. But it is not so now. There is a growing tolerance, a growing awareness, of course. And it is just a, not a one person's work. It's a, it's a collective. It's us activists who have been voicing out. It is the media, it is the judiciary, it is the government itself, which has taken so many steps and proactive measures, which has been, uh, which has been sensitized by us activists in so many ways that this kind of a change has happened. I have met the, uh, I mean, I gave, I remember in 2010, I gave a presentation uh, and a talk at the Madras Judicial Academy in front of, uh, in front of uh, Honorable Justice Altamas Kabir sir, and uh, a lot of other judiciary as well, presenting the problems, the struggles and issues of uh, the transgender community. And then followed by that, there was a national uh, seminar where hundreds of uh, judiciary participated and the, and the seminar was called uh, uh, Transgender and Law. And uh, it was actually organized by United Nations Development Program. And again, I met uh, Altamas Kabir and a lot of judiciary there. And followed by that, um, not only me, but a lot of activists like Priya Babu, Lakshmi, and um, Gauri, and a lot of us participated and spoke to the judiciary and gave a sensitization uh, talks and presentations and PPTs and video films and all that. It was a one day seminar, but it was a hundred percent. It was so effective. It was the, it was where the change actually happened. Followed by that seminar, the National uh, Legal Services Authority in Alsa had filed a petition, public litigation petition, favoring the transgender community um, appealing to the Supreme Court for our, uh, for the recognition of our civil rights, legal rights and all that. I think it was in 2014, um, actually in between, I think during this time, Altamas Kabeza also became the Chief, Chief Justice of India. And he invited me to the Rashtrapati Bhavan uh, for his swearing in ceremony, which was a really an honor for me. And the, the case, was actually in the Supreme Court and then the judgment came. Of course, it was a positive one. And the Supreme Court actually gave recommendations to the state and the central governments on how transgender people should be included at all areas of the system, uh, including the, uh, the Supreme Court recommended um, reservations for transgender people and so many other things too. But till today, that those recommendations were not uh, does not really not hundred percent, not even fifty percent of uh, the Supreme Court's recommendations have happened. The uh, the current BJP government did form did uh, bring forth a transgender protection bill, which was uh, I think in two thousand nineteen it was passed. Uh, it was passed in the uh, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. <clears throat> I think uh, the transgender community is actually divided over that bill, majorly because it criminalizes a lot of uh, um, transgender people. I think the Transgender Persons um, Protection Act um, was actually passed by the Parliament of India 
with the objective to safeguard and protect the rights of the transgender people. However, various, various provisions of the act are regressive and violative of the fundamental rights that have been upheld by the Supreme Court in the NALSA case, uh, in the Union versus NALSA case. Uh, this 2019 act actually attempts to control uh, the gender non-conforming identities and non-biological family relations in a manner that keeps them subordinate to the heteronormative patriarchal family structures. Section 12.3 of the act that compels transgender persons to either continue living with their birth family or to be placed in rehabilitation centers upon the order by a competent board in violation of the rights of transgender persons under Article 19 of the Constitution of India, 1950. The article guarantees to every citizen the right to reside and settle in any part of the territory of India. It does not make any distinction in treatment between minors and adult transgender persons and is an intrusive manner of regulating the choice of where these individuals can choose to live. Denying transgender persons the, the choice to live in any alternative arrangements. Say for instance, the choice of living as a family within the transgender community could be seen as an instance of interference with their decisional and autonomy recognized by the Honorable Supreme Court in the case of K.S. Puttaswamy versus Union of India. Gender non-conformity among transgender persons begin at a very young age, as uh, most of you would have known, which very often results in our families vanishing and throwing away us from our homes, since we do not bend, uh, fit into the gender binaries. The hijras uh, are the transgender people who follow the hijra systems are systematically organized hierarchical communities in the transgender community. Uh, it is more of a family, but the Transgender Act Bill does not recognize the system. Um, the Apex Court in Nalsa actually held sex as a protected characteristic under Article 15 and 16 of the Constitution to include gender identity, which would mean that sex-based protections should extend to transgender and intersex persons. The court also identified transgender and intersex persons as socially and educationally backward citizens. Therefore, transgender persons are entitled to reservations in the matter of appointments as envisaged under Article 16, 4 of the Constitution. So right now, the transgender community is still in its backwardness. It's still in its uh, struggles. But nothing, uh, not everything is negative. A lot of things are positive. Many transgender people are now able to uh, get into government jobs and uh, as police officers or the doctors or even a lawyer, we have Satisri. And many transgender people are able to study at academic institutions as well. Um, many of the universities are open to accept transgender people. And many state governments, especially governments, uh, the effort of Tamil Nadu government has been pioneering way back in 2018 when the Transgender Welfare Board was formed during the DMK regime. And that was an example, a model for the 2014 NALSA, uh, NALSA versus Union of uh, India case too. A very model where the Supreme Court recommended uh, proactive measures for the welfare of the transgender community. And recently the Kerala government, the government uh, previously, the Congress as well as the current communist government, both of them have been very proactive in upholding transgender people's rights with uh, many revolutionary measures. Uh, some of them fail, some of them are successes, but there's still a long way to go. And that long way is family inclusion. If you look at many transgender people still begging and doing sex work, it is because our families have excluded 
as I think the real um, the reservations, I don't think it will help. Um, offering jobs wouldn't help. Uh, short stay homes wouldn't help. What would really help is our families, including us at our homes, so that we don't beg, come out to beg, we don't come out to do sex work, we don't come out and spoil our entire lives, changing our fate from hope to despair. And uh, that is how the way forward I see it in, uh, in the rights of the community. On the legal front, I think transgender people, single transgender people are unable to create families, adopt children. Still the marriage uh, of, uh, of the transgender, even though it is not a post, it is still, there's no protection for a marriage between a man and a transgender woman. And also, likewise, many of uh, these things have to be addressed. I'm not even sure how much, uh, when it comes to property rights, how much we can uh, fight and have the right to own our, uh, our parents or our grandparents' property, the rightful share for us. So there is so much to do, so much to go way forward. But in spite of the uh, setbacks, even after the NASA judgment and the setbacks that we see in the transgender welfare uh, in the Transgender Protection Act of 2019, I'm positive. I'm very hopeful. And in 10 years, I see so many transgender people empowered in this country, creating wonderful contributions for the welfare of our country. Um, in today's uh, uh, speech, I had used some of the references and texts from Itlagiri Jayalakshmi, advocate Itlagiri Jayalakshmi too. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I hope I had enlightened you with my presence and uh, my speech. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shah. Uh, that was indeed wonderful. I mean, uh, may I just uh, go over directly to Ramkumar, sir? Thank you, Shah. Excellent articulation by Kalki Subramani. Thank you, sir. A, a shunned and ostracized band of fellow beings is slowly getting a name and fame. It is heartening to note that the, the scar of untouchability is slowly disappearing. Despite the growing tolerance by all who are ostensibly concerned, Kalki Subramaniam's articulation shows that the rights guaranteed under the recent law are yet to transcend to the members of the transgender community. We hope and believe that the coming years will witness them in many dream families. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I mean, uh, may I request uh, 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 Ramushan, sir, please? Uh, really, it's a new subject and also new area where the people are, people will have to transform themselves as to recognize a transgender community as part of the society. That, that, that mindset will have to come because as Kalki Subramani has said, First, the recognition must come from their family. They must realize their uh, feelings as to how they are being dealt with or how, what, are, what are all the, um, what do you call, internal struggle that the such type of people are undergoing. And how to overcome that and how to pacify and how to uh, rectify it and also to bring them to the mainstream. That is the main thing. Because once... Uh, earlier, as Kalki has said, in fact, the once a transgender child bonds in a family, they feel that even uh, recognizing that as a child of the family itself was a stigma to the family, and uh, they were trying to avoid or to discard the child. That was the that was the culture that has been taken up, and uh, as uh, she has said, people have uh, transformed to. Bangalore or some other places, they find themselves into some, other, some type of employment for their existence. But that is not enough for the purpose of protecting them. And fortunately that uh, the Supreme Court has come to their rescue. They have been, that, that gender has been, that type of gender, has, gender discrimination will have to go and they will have to be treated as at par with other uh, sex 
has been recognized in the nalsas case but subsequently now justice uh, anand decision in madras high court also though it is a what you call uh, a learning decision as far as judges concerned how these people are undergoing and how far the counseling is required for the purpose of the transformation that they want to have and also when they decide as to whether they will have to live and the right to living together relationship or the marriage will have to be provided for right to marriage has to be provided among themselves or all those things where the society and the law some law will have to be evolved for that purpose also have been uh, touched upon by brother justice anand venkatesh in that judgment and in fact he himself has under, uh, undergone the counseling process uh, in the, uh, the psychiatry psychiatrists who have been uh, engaged for that purpose and to see that how such type of people are undergoing the mental trauma that such type of people are undergoing for the purpose of getting their recognition in spite of the fact that the law has recognized them legal uh, system has recognized them but that has not been fortified as kalki has said but long long way will have to go but now the at least there is some change has come i think in all field in police doctors and uh, the even i think in tamil nadu there is a judicial department also has some transgender people are being appointed it appears if i remember correct and they are working everywhere and so slowly this may give a way give way forward for getting recognition and such type of uh, the persons who have attained that stage must also come forward to say that this is not an obstacle for their um, uh, moving towards their life so such a motivation is given by persons who have achieved that stage will also give rise to a motivation for those people who are not coming to the uh, limelight to expose themselves to the society and face the situation and uh, um, overcome the situation so that that type of mental attitude also must come from such type of people also first because they must also come forward before the society and say that we are not uh, uh, less favored persons and uh, as others we are also capable of doing things once such things has come and uh, some provisions has been made for the purpose of protecting their right giving education and uh, employment everything has come i think slowly this may uh, give rise to a situation where they make they can also the untouchability attitude will go and they will also be recognized part of the society that is the only thing possible mindset of the people also will have to be changed first of all as kalki has said the family people must come forward to recognize them once that has happened automatically the society also will recognize thank you very much we all the best for your efforts see that uh, uh your uh, the persons to whom you are fighting for let them get their legal rights which has been provided under the constitution thank you thank you thank you ramashin sir uh, 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 may I request uh, honorable mr justice uh, jayshankar nambiar sir to offer your comments sir first of all thank you kalki for that uh, wonderful exposition uh, thank you sir your uh i from your from your talk from your brief talk um what i gathered was you see essentially there are, you're, you're talking about two exclusions one is exclusion from a family and exclusion from society uh my question to you uh, is largely this while you know the laws can tackle the exclusion from society by you know either by bringing in fresh legislation or by interpreting existing laws so as to you know make it gender neutral uh because you have to understand that our laws uh are you know in a particular narrative it's not it uh, over the years we've come to question the laws because of the uh you know dominant male stereotype um narrative um and this is you know uh, across the globe uh where if you're talking about USA you're talking about you know law basically enacted by a white mail uh you know ignore uh, who comes from the uh dominant caste etc so i mean those those features uh up you know global and you have them affecting all the laws uh, all over the world and uh, it may take time before we start making them you know conform to various perspectives uh whether it is the feminist perspective or the you know uh, critical race theory etc uh it will take time but 
as you mentioned quite rightly that it is the family exclusion that really traumatizes the uh, you know the uh, uh, transgender community and uh, how how uh, uh, you know how much of this exclusion uh, is actually present uh, in india today so that uh, you know are we are we spending more time addressing the you know the lesser of the evils rather than the major evil i just wanted to hear it from you because you've done considerable work in this is field um and you're right about uh, the you know uh, as uh, this is adil venkatraman um, uh, you know showed in uh, madras uh ultimately it is a question of learning more about the other uh you know we, we always speak in binaries uh but it is important for us as a society to get to know the other better and that demolishes most of the you know myths that we have harbored in our minds and uh, uh, you know that is an example of how everybody should behave not only a judge the high court but it is how everybody in society must behave you must try and understand and that's what tolerance is all about and tolerance is a bad word i, do, I don't want to be used tolerance because tolerance uh, uh, you know suggests that somebody dominant is actually conceding uh, or you know becoming very benevolent in accommodating the views of the other that should not be the case uh, you accommodate the views of the other because there is that other and that other is also living in the same society so that that's that has to be the mentality uh, i wanted to know from you uh, among the uh, community that you're working for how many perceive the the family exclusion as the more dominant kind of exclusion which needs to be addressed and if so what are the steps that you would suggest uh, you know uh, we do either as a society or through legal machinery how do you address that because when it comes to the family uh, there is a there is a conflict because again uh, on the one hand you say that the laws should not permeate into the family and uh, you know keep the family away from the law uh, but then you're trying to remedy a social evil or you know call it a social uh, uh, a problem where you need to do something into the family even if it be you know forceful education or counseling etc so how do you uh, in your experience how do we go about that if it is in fact the greater of the evils the family exclusion sorry i i, 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 I have i made myself clear because i i, I went on rambling yeah. for some time yes <laughs> yes yes probably from a from a from a victim point of view i can actually answer this question rather than an activist first of perspective i think so because uh, more than a uh, 90% of transgender people i would say 95 of percent of us are victims of course i think uh, uh, there is no statistic there's no uh, proper statistics first of all about the population of transgender community in india i think in 2000 um, 12 there was this statistics taken which points out that 4 lakh uh, 4 lakh 22000 people exist as transgender or other gender in india out of which 50000 people could be below 18 but i do not believe that um, census data it could be totally wrong i believe that it it could be four or five times higher than that data and in what context was that data taken nobody knows because not every transgender person comes and tells the census officer that i am a transgender so i don't believe that but um forget about the census but i would say that out of the 100% of the transgender population almost 95% of the transgender population is uh, excluded from their families is uh, very much excluded from their families and when they are chased out or in a situation where they have to they themselves step out they tend to be the victims of exploitation not only by uh, the public uh, and the traffickers and uh, organized crime but also by the transgender community itself in a way the transgender community also exploits them by putting them into pushing them into uh, sex work and begging and uh, getting commissions out of it 
So in, in all in all, at all, Iran as trans people are becoming victims. How can we stop this, especially the family? How can we make our families include, in, be inclusive? Is of course, uh, the legislation could definitely pay, pay, play a part. Because I think when uh, a child, a transgender teenager, or somebody in her early 20s, or anybody who is a part of a biological family, when they're excluded, they should be punished because it is definitely a crime and an offense. And uh, even their, uh, their property rights are all denied. Everything is denied. Education, a better education, a home, a dignity, respect, a good future, everything is denied to that person. So whoever does that injustice should be definitely punished. Currently, we don't have any provisions for that. And uh, what is really required more than that is, of course, as uh, uh, in the recent judgment uh, by, I think, Justice Anand uh, Prakash, I think so. Is, is, uh, yes, yes. Uh, Justice Anand Venkatesh in his uh, verdict said about recommending education on LGBT rights in colleges and universities and all sorts. <laughs> that will be way forward for. I'm not even sure how much we can change the entire system now to be inclusive of the trans community, but we can definitely make sure that our, our next generation is much more open. Our future parents, the children of today, who become the future parents and future professionals and judges and scientists and politicians and policymakers, they can make a change. They can uh, make a change in our system. And definitely, as I said, a protection against these kids who are thrown out, punishment for the family who does that, and uh, but, uh, education. Kalki, uh, Kalki, I was just uh, sorry to interrupt there. Uh, yes, if if there is a, a child protection act, I mean, you see, the the, the problem is uh, while you have different perspectives, and you know that uh, you said uh, you know it's by the time you're a teenager that you realize that you know. Uh, your preferences are different and uh, that is what sort of you know brings about the rift with the family who is probably in an orthodox uh, framework of mind etc but at that stage what happens in most uh, families as we've seen uh, in the case of other uh, you know communities also is that the parents uh, you know try to brainwash the person into submission yes. into uh, conformity right with the, with the so-called yeah. Uh, normal, uh, which they have, you know, come to believe exists. Now, at that stage, probably there is not much of uh, resistance by the uh, child or by the uh, teenager, and the uh, decision to break away and uh, you know uh, comes in only at a time when uh, you know uh, the child is now an adult. So, you. Uh, if there is a if there is a uh, uh, an attempt at brainwashing, for example, when when the the person is still a child, you could still probably you know get in the Child Protection Act or the Juvenile Justice Act, etc., to to try and uh, you know uh, enforce this as a form of cruelty by the parents on the child, and uh, uh, you know take action against them. But that's really not uh, what is happening because majority of the cases are when they turn. You know, uh, they become adults and they become majors, and they're capable of taking decisions for themselves. Now, while they have, uh, they can take the decision for themselves, they also go out of the category of dependence uh, if the family pushes them out. Right? Uh, yeah. At that stage, we, uh, you know, how how can you possibly enforce something on the family because the family is no longer, you know, uh, you cannot be compelled to do that. Yes. So how do we resolve that? Education obviously is one uh, one way out, uh, you know. But that that is uh, uh, again a, a very uh, uh, it's a tightrope to walk because uh, whenever you talk about uh, counselling one set of people, you also have to take into account their privacy rights and uh, you know their freedom of choice. Uh, uh, they can uh, they have a uh, freedom to have a. Uh, keep um, adhere to a particular belief and uh, you cannot compel them to change their mindset so this is the uh, 
you know dilemma that that is normally faced and um, if some practical suggestions with regard to how that can be addressed can come from within the unity itself i think that will go a long way in uh, addressing uh, these issues because uh, inclusiveness in society i mean i uh, i refuse to believe that our citizenry is so heartless uh, that you know it cannot uh, sort of uh, mold the tools of law to cater to uh, inclusion of the uh, excluded community yeah yeah i think uh, that is a big challenge for um, activist people also sir how can we actually um, change the situation how can we protect that child uh being thrown away from their homes because the parents have uh, more authority and rights over that child and of course uh, they are the decision makers how can we interfere in that child's decision and how can we protect that child is a big challenge for activists like us because it's it's also about uh, the rights of the child even though it's about the rights of the child uh the child may not be in a position to explain it also uh the reason of fear uh, exactly. the reason of desperation all these things could be uh, scoring for the parents you see so that is one of the challenges that we actually face today uh, as an act- as activists so it is only when transgender people come out of their homes um, and when they actually become a few years later when they actually become adults only then we are able to interfere into their lives uh could talk to their parents but anyway even that some parents accepts many parents don't because they see it as a issue uh, of a shame of uh, family pride losing family pride if there is a transgender kid and all that so it's really a big challenge and we are unable to uh, address that challenge all our activists across india are unable to address that challenge okay thanks thanks kalki but kalki kalki by punishing the parents can there be a smooth uh, restoration into the family would it be no, not difficult it would be it is very difficult but i uh, why where, where can we do i mean how can we bring justice to this i so only other choice is counseling of course counseling and sensitization for parents and can we do it at each and every case um if it is done it's wonderful but uh, that's again who will protect that child who is unable to uh, even go to the police station or anywhere for its own its own uh, no, i think it has to be it has question. to be uh, uh, reverse engineering you know you have to you have to address the problem at the society level and then it percolates down to the family level because what is acceptable in society uh, the family also eventually will uh, accept absolutely absolutely that is why the role of judiciary the government or the media and the academicians and the public plays a major role in changing the stereotypes breaking the perceptions of transgender people as a shame and making them as giving inclusive images inclusive opportunities across all arenas and uh, respecting transgender people and not neglecting them as just others in the column right. everywhere yeah no, i think gender main. gender gender neutral gender neutral uh, statutes and uh, probably an interpretation of existing statutes to include you know uh, all people who come within the fold of a particular definition like they do in the in, like they've done quite successfully in the south african constitutional court uh where they you know uh, where the definition of spouse uh, was held to include even you know not only the husband and wife it could, it could include even a same sex partner um you know th- those interpretations actually recognize that uh, you're not thinking in binary terms anymore um it's a the the uh, interpretation of words which is what uh, the supreme court has also been doing all these years when it comes to interpretation of the constitution i mean uh, you have one sentence in article 21 which says uh, you know freedom and the uh, right to life and personal liberty and uh, look where we are in terms of the right to life uh, it's, it's it's encompassed everything that is that is not mentioned in the 
uh, in the uh, constitution itself so that that process of interpretation we can do uh, but okay. you know you have to it, it, the changes have to come from society itself and as it, as i said it's it is just a reverse the changes come from the society and it reflects in the family and then the families uh, include their child respect their child nourish their child that is the only way to make it forward that is why we have been um, sensitized and we have been doing a lot of uh, sensitization through various mediums across relentlessly activist people are doing so in Thank fact you. the acceptance of uh, such type of this gender as a common in the society itself it comes probably and also it will not be it is not treated as a same by the family then because once the society accepts you as part of the society automatically the transform transformation will come into the family level also because what they feel is they may not be recognized either the family the, the entire family itself become a, uh, become a what do you call a segregated one from the society if the uh, such thing has been accepted maybe that that may be the fear in the mind of the family concept as i may be probably because i do not know uh, how to change the family people is also one of the area where uh, because we cannot compel them Ramachan sir, uh, I think it's high time we realize it's not no longer black and white. Yes, it's also no, grey also exists. Right? That is a, that is the only thing. Because society once the society accepts them as part of the society and they, it is not a shameful act or something like that, then automatically you go back, the the family also respects them. The, it's that just is like you are uncomfortable with something that is not very regularly seen, so you tend to Rao sir, uh, your comments please. Mm -hmm. that was really a great talk and i come from an industry where gender wise has been in existence for a long time i fought that for some time we yeah, i was able to move till lgb but t never came into the picture if you look at aviation history uh, the gender bias between men and women existed not today in the 80s there's a famous uh, case also nargis mirza mirza versus air india where inequality the supreme court at that time held it to be legal i came into the picture somewhere in 97 we tried to change it we could change the mindset of the honorable bombay high court we could change the mindset of the honorable delhi high court but we failed miserably in 2003 in the supreme court the supreme court still went by the 84 judgment of nargis mirza later on lot of promulgations of ordinances gender equality between male and female came in i have been uh, i interacted with lakshmi narayan for some time in the initial stages so i know i know her personally that's another matter but 2016 was a hallmark where you know the government and air india could have done wonders where a transgender woman was not selected as an aerostatist the engineering girl I mean, it was really sad that was one opportunity where the state could have been a perfect example of how to inculcate or bring people into the fold and into the family i mean nothing better than the, that sphere because had she been recruited as an <clears throat> air hostess she would have gone met people people would have seen her she would have been a face a flying face of what you all are doing on ground but unfortunately a great opportunity was lost both by the government state and and the government uh, company and it is very true that the worst battles are battles with the family you see that those are one of the worst battles because the the, the family is scared to fold first is how to kind of groom you in life and second is how to groom you and bring you in front of society because the 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 stigma or enigma you put it any which way you want it is actually society we are scared of what society will say rather than being scared of what we want to do for our children see no whatever happens by birth is is uh, beyond one's control i mean nobody can predict <clears throat> the whether it's a male child a female child or a transgender child nobody nobody can predict it just it just happens naturally it's a biological and of uh, accident yeah but the fact remains is the family is more scared of society 
and that is where as justice nambiar was saying that is where the judiciary will come like uh, i in one of my earlier talks also i had said when there was an employee in a company who was uh, in a medical test found to be hiv positive and the company wanted to throw him out and when the company because i was at, i was with that case so when when we went to court we had a great judge who told the companies why do you want to throw him out so the company said sir he's hiv positive so we said hiv positive doesn't mean anything because for it to bloom into something else would is is a gestation period anywhere between 6 months to 6 weeks i mean 6 weeks 6 days 6 weeks 6 months 6 years or 6 uh, decades and that is where the honorable judge did agree and he said no like you will have to take him back because they wanted to terminate this employee so he says the judge said no you'll have to take him back and as and when hiv blooms into what it is supposed to bloom you can take action but till then you cannot do it and we were really surprised at the way the honorable judge saw it till we realized that the chief justice of south africa had just come in a week before and he had held a symposium for all the judges where he himself said that i am hiv positive and my country has accepted me as the chief justice of my of my country so what is wrong in your accepting so when the more number of people come out the more number of people here see it it we all come with mindsets we all i mean nobody can say that we don't have a mindset because whatever your parents teach you at home is what you carry forward into society it's only when you go when you till you're in school it's perfectly okay once you get into college that's when you meet a number of people you meet a lot of other communities you meet a, a, a different orientations come in and like i have dealt with the lgb very very closely uh, because my field the, it was where uh, there were a lot of people in that and they were in the closet but they did come out of it and we are lucky today we live with it we are very happy they are happy one happy family so ultimately it is for each of us when we talk of your family or uh, uh, when i come to your family i should not be able to ask Who, you know who is this child it should be like is this one of your child that should be the question put but whereas we look at it at a very different manner and that's what creates problems at the start it it is it is a very uphill task that you all have come where you have come and i am really i bow down to you for whatever you've done for the fraternity to get them where they are and uh, great going and i i wish you all the best in the future and i know there are a lot on this forum here who would definitely want to help you out and all the best thank you and i thank sham sir for getting you here for all of us to see you face to face i mean we read in your uh, articles or or we read your name in the papers but to meet somebody face to face and interact with you is, is a very good opportunity sham sir has given us thank you very much thank you thank you rao sir sham 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 just one question just one question to kalki kalki Uh, yeah, where yeah, where where did you exactly experience they have the bitter experience of hostile discrimination in the school was it in the school first experience hostile first discrimination obviously in the school school uh, when i was sixth uh, when i was in sixth and seventh standard that is when uh, the bullying actually started sir and when i went to college it was even more worse it was also Um, physical and sexual abuse was also there yeah so could we could can we think of a system wherein uh, exclusive uh, transgenders are given education education only to transgenders exclusively so that they will not suffer such hostile discrimination not sir that will not no, be that will not give a different no, no, i don't know i am only thinking aloud i understand sir Yeah, that will be I am only thinking aloud against inclusive inclusive philosophy yeah i don't know i am only thinking rather aloud correct thing i think rather than creating a separate school uh, the best thing is to include them in in the currently studying school but change the perspective change the mindsets of the faculties and students and make them understand sensitize and accept people based on whoever they are their preferences are gen that is the way forward 
Sorry, this this was to... happened in the disability community where they had separate uh, schools and institutions for blind people and uh, for you yeah. know hearing impaired. And uh, today, the disability movement is talking about rights of disabled, which includes inclusiveness. Yes. Only when disabled yeah. people are <laughs> included amongst us, other students will recognize them and take them as you know friends and other uh, intimate people. And uh, the co- process will be difficult. But it's a necessary process for integration of the the other, so to speak, including the transgender. This is Ram Kumar. That is why in school right. earlier, children with learning disabilities were considered a nuisance in class mm-hmm. because they had short attention yeah. disorders yeah. and whatever. We have a, but today, we have a famous today, Hindi movie on that. Yes, sir. yes, sir. yes. That is a meeper. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So, but today. It, LD is is part of uh, the curriculum in the school where teachers are taught to handle how to handle uh, the LD students. So it it has been a moment that's taken a long time, but uh, uh, separating them would actually be detrimental in the long run. Then help them uh, 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 because again they would be cocooned into that uh, boundary yeah. of the school. Yeah. So, no, also, I think. Uh, I I think it's important that uh, you know there is uh, there is actually awareness created in society with regard to the new labels that we've come to start you know uh, attach to these uh, uh, people and communities because uh, I don't know how many out there actually know the difference between you know uh, a transgender transsexual uh, you know whether you're calling it um, non conformist you know, or whatever it is. yeah non I mean, you you have LGBT uh, I plus, plus. and uh, you know that is uh, uh, in, uh, the nomenclature and the uh, the subtle distinctions between what uh, each of these communities come to represent and what actually is the you know uh, uh, issue that they are facing. I think that requires a, uh, an understanding first before we start addressing what the problem. I mean, the solution, finding solutions. Um, because I think today, largely, uh, in society, there is complete lack of awareness among the subtleties of these different communities because it was all combined into one uh, earlier. I mean, you you either had somebody who was odd or you had somebody that was, you know, uh, this is what entirely cure, cure uh, uh, jurisprudence is all about. So, uh, I think we need to have uh, awareness with regard to the subtle distinctions that, uh, you know, uh, come across various uh, communities and then start addressing what because it, ultimately you're addressing the social issue and a social issue has to be particular and uh, you know particular to a particular community uh, and each one faces a different kind of uh, you know uh, problem and hostility. So uh, that is why they, Zambia, today WhatsApp, Instagram is playing a very big role. In, in bringing out the, so so many uh, issues, like my son runs a gaming cafe. They've had uh, LGBT program where they came in. They had an uh, open house and air, air. Yeah, there was an open mic session in his cafe where he said everything is free. Just come, talk, give your talk, get your people, and so even the next generation is starting to accept and agree to be them being part of them. So there is a change that is happening. It, it like no no, change and also, you need, I think uh, we need we need more uh, studies, uh, not just any research study. It needs to be ethnographic, uh, you know, studies, uh, which would actually go and you know uh, understand the uh, the the issues faced by these communities by actually interacting and immersing the researcher going and immersing, you know, uh, himself or herself or with that. You know, uh, there, also, only there's, then, there's also a slight problem. This community is very enclosed. They they, uh, they don't allow outsiders to come in very easily. I mean, they don't trust the outsiders very easily. Some better I think Kalki would, yeah, exactly. Kalki would agree with me that it takes it will take you a lot of time and effort to be with them for to be accepted that you can okay come into the inner circle. As long as you're on the periphery, it's perfectly okay. But to get into the inner circle is going to be a big task. Uh, just no, but then you have. The, I'm sure there are many like uh, Kalki herself who uh, you know who can actually operate from within. 
and uh, bring out their perspectives and i think that kind of uh, information dissemination is what is required uh, because I, i i read a good book by uh, what was her, her name revathi revathi is uh, uh, come out with a i mean quite some years ago um, which which is basically a personal narrative so you know that that sort of uh, at least my personal experience is that that cuts across borders and you know it it actually has a reach uh, when you hear it from somebody uh, and it's a personal narrative uh, that definitely has its uh, reach in society and i think uh, more of such works uh, would be a welcome thing as far as uh, you know dispelling common myths and notions in society are concerned actually there's a more and more of discussions and deliberations on of this or in a better platform also i mean not that uh, uh, this is uh, maybe it's only legal platform but in social platforms if it's the i'm sure that uh, it'll it'll go a long way uh, we have a uh, girdar sir uh, advocate girdar from chennai sir please how oh, evasive with the concept of equality <laughs> uh, good evening i have uh, two questions uh, one a comment initially in india for instance it's totally difficult different from the west uh, in the sense that sexuality and sexual rights are not enjoyed by the mainstream say for instance consulting adults have difficulty in you know having sexual relationships if they are not married and today we have all these jihad anti jihad laws with uh, you know say that interfaith marriages are discouraged versus versus the moral policing sir exactly <laughs> moral <laughs> policing <laughs> and uh, you know they reduced the age they increased the age of consent from 16 to 18 which according to me is a very retrograde step because we are all sexual beings and our sexuality comes alive at the age of 14 and 15 so uh, with all, and the poxo is often abused to pick up uh, you know uh, consenting romantic relationships and uh, parents often complain against the children's uh, uh, their uh, you know their uh, children's lovers and so on so anyway while this why i am saying this is in this situation where even the mainstream heterosexual population is deprived of rights their sexuality rights and uh, you know a right right to consenting sex it, it is a it is it is a welcome change that uh, lgbtq rights and uh, the rights of the gay population are being discussed and being mainstream and uh, hopefully that will lead to liberation of the a heterosexual population also sexuality of the heterosexual population also it's a paradox which we don't witness so much in the west so your comment on that and secondly my second question is today we look at a lot of transgender trans women but why don't we meet or uh, encounter issues relating to trans men i'm sure there are as many women who want to who want to become men or who feel that they are men as there are men who feel that they are women why is it that we are not hearing their voices that's all i hope i have uh, i'm clear uh were this questions directed to me yes okay not great really. <laughs> <laughs> not right. that you have to answer them but uh, you know can you address the issues sure sure uh before answering your questions i would uh, want to share an information with everyone and especially uh, just as akj nambia sir sir um, since you said the uh, revathi's book you read and it has been a personal narrative yes it is a very good book and uh, you also said that there should be many books and narratives from the community so the back side what you see is my book this one we have not the others it is it will be out soon next week on amazon um It is actually published by Ocean Press, and uh, this book is actually carrying out my essays, monologues, conversation, and uh, my poetry as well. It's an English book, which will be available soon on Amazon, probably on twenty sixth of this month. So I'll keep you updated on all that. So I'll keep everyone updated on that. Why did you choose that uh, title? Uh, that's really nice i mean we are not the others i mean we would like to see them as something queer or something other i mean it's no longer others we are you in the community thank you sir. thank you that's precisely the reason i chose this titles as well because even in some of the government institutions and other things it's male female and others we are always placed with others as some like a garbage and all the others 
trans men, trans women, intersex people, everyone is put into that bracketed category. So there is no proper um, uh, respect over there. So I, I, this is my aggressive title, we are not the others. Yeah. I, I, I don't approve of you using the word garbage. I would rather you, you use the word alien because everybody is interested in aliens today. Alien. And that will take you that will take you much further. So even you okay. say that we are not I, aliens. Avish. Avish. Again going back to Avish. Sir, I am I am only putting it in the right perspective, sir. I mean this is nothing with aviation, but because why why should you consider yourself to be garbage? Why do you even want to describe yourself or be part of it? Somebody might call you. Don't take it. But well, not take it. Not that once you have been uh, transformed into uh, men or women, then why can't you recognize as man or woman so that you will coming under the world? as regards the intersex people or something like that? We will have to find out some method by which they are also to. Bring under some gender, but once you have been transformed into one 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 sex to another, and you accept as that sex, bio, your biological status goes and the, the transformed uh, the status comes. Right? And, it, and again, we go to the binary. Binary no, is not you, you want something to be X or Y and nothing else. Alan, no, not that. Yeah, I think, I I think you should just try. Right. No, no. Yeah, bring just, more persons into just, the existing gender itself. No, in most but of the applications the that you and I fill, deal with. We should be able to see. We should be able to see. In most of the applications, in most of the applications that one fills for various purposes, if you just get rid of, get rid of this column of uh, you know gender, uh, and you know you you have gender written there, and then uh, on the side you have an option of ticking either male or female. Male or female. Correct. Yeah, right. uh, and now you have others. Instead of yeah. that, just Remove that and let the applicant fill in whatever the gender is. And, and uh, 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 <laughs> Jaisekar Dabbe sir, I mean, uh, whatever be the application forms, that has got no consequence with the exactly. uh, purpose. <laughs> Absolutely right. nothing. But still, uh, uh, like uh, we, you we have the be. sir of Calicut used to say that even if your name is Mahalingam, you'll have to mention whether you're a male or female in the railway booking form. <laughs> you should be yeah. able to see homo homogeneity in heterogeneity. Absolutely, sir. So I think a lot of uh, transgender people uh, feel they are of both genders. That there is gender fluidity there. Yeah. They neither they either feel like male or female. They might feel separately as a, as a other gender, of course, the third gender, or if we put it like that. Some people feel they are both genders. Some people feel they don't belong to both the genders as well. So, so the existence of transgender people is an is a is a must. And uh, the third category is definitely an important one uh, because uh, politically also it is a, such an important thing. Many transgender people feel. Um, I recognize myself as a woman. And uh, in all my documents, I have changed my, my gender as a woman. But yet I identify as a transgender woman and I don't hide my uh, gender identity or my story. Uh, but many of my friends don't really want to be recognized as women. They are happy to be recognized as transgender. Transgender. So there are, there are different people have different. Uh, uh, no, the question is, uh, if, if you're recognizing gender fluidity as a reality, then uh, any any app, uh, you know, uh, request to put in a gender as something which is permanent loses uh, importance. I mean, it becomes irrelevant. Because the very yes. concept of gender fluidity shows that you cannot have a permanent, uh, you know, gender. Uh, so, and for that matter, sir, I mean, uh, uh, of course, Kalki is a point as well. You have a motherly affection. So motherly affection, then are you saying it's a female affection? No, it's, it's I mean, I can in the morning be motherly and uh, in the afternoon fatherly and the night, I don't know what else. But Friendly. at the end of the day... <laughs> Should be should be categorized. I mean, I, I that's the I I think that's the point that we are trying to make today. The so gender gender is of course um, uh, just beyond male and female. Gender is many. Exactly. So we need to recognize a transgender. Then the transgender itself. We have transgender men, transgender women, and people and two-spirited people. Two-spirited people also communities. 
um, that consider themselves as two spirited and all that. So um, on that line, there is so much that we should get get uh, to know ourselves on gender. I think so. So gender fluid. There are people within the transgender community who feel gender fluid. Not every transgender person actually feels gender fluid. What I'm trying to say is these kind of uh, variances and different gender identities exist within the transgender umbrella. So we cannot put everyone into the just the others categories. That is what. And when it comes to gender in our country, we have to go a long way. Firstly, to get educated. Secondly, uh, to accept. And thirdly, to be inclusive, of course. And coming back to Giridhar sir's uh, 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 question and uh, the answer. Uh, sir, you said why the transgender men's uh, issues are not in the forefront. So when I talk about transgender people, it's always about the trans men too. Uh, but within the transgender community, the trans men are some of the most vulnerable uh, population and uh, some of the most affected people because naturally they are born in a women's body. So a woman's body is expected to fulfill certain cultural, traditional, physical needs of a family. For example, the marriage, the, the child bearing and all that. And in our families, it is the women are supposed to save the prestige and pride of the family. And women are not empowered. Many women are not given the opportunity to get educated to go to a job and all that. So these are some of the setbacks for a female body. These setbacks reflect upon trans men too, because they are they are um, homeless when they are thrown out. They are homeless. They are victims of culture. They are victims of tradition. They are victims of religion, and they are victims of family pride. So more than the transgender women who are born with in a male's body, but have the privileges of uh, the male body. When they're even when they're excluded from the families, they have the privileges of a male body. They don't yeah. get raped. Yeah. When a trans man is uh, when a trans man is excluded, he cannot have that privilege because he is in a women's body and he can be raped and he can be yeah. trafficked and can be a subject of violence and all that. So basically, that has been one of the biggest setbacks for trans men in coming out and voicing for their own rights. Isn't and, it uh, nicely? You, yeah. What, what was your first question? No, isn't you are just on this? Over. I'll I'll tell I'll explain. Just on this, isn't it important? See, for instance, many of us <coughs> here hardly hear about trans women as a distinct category, and uh, that's as trans men. I mean, sorry, trans women we do here. So, isn't it necessary to? you know, uh, kind of uh, distinctly speak about uh, the issues of trans men, uh, the way you spoke. See, for, I, in fact, probably the first time I'm hearing a proper perspective on trans men, I always was wondering, and my wife also keeps talking about trans men. Anyway, uh, thank you for that clarification. My first question was, in India, we have, see, in the West, rights of sexuality and right to sexual freedom is enjoyed by heterosexual community. Yes. You know? and whereas here, even heterosexual couples have do not have sexual rights or sexuality unless they get into the bondage of marriage. To add to all these difficulties, we have the anti-jihad laws and interface, you know, uh, lynching of intercaste couples and so on. To add to this, they've reduced, they've increased the age of consent of sexuality from 16 to 18. When all of us attain sexuality at the age of 14, 15, we become sexual beings. And they, naturally, there is, a, there is a sexual exploration that happens. And criminalizing such sexual exploration among adolescents is a, is a huge crime. Anyway, coming back to my That's question, true. in this scenario where the mainstream population does not enjoy right to sex and sexuality, it is a welcome chain that we are talking about right to sexuality of transgender population and LGBTQ. You know, LGBTQ, AI rights, and so on. And uh, in a sense, the right to sexuality of uh, heterosexual population, uh, population is riding piggyback on these marginalized communities. I don't yes. know if I'm making sense. See, I'll give you an illustration. If you see the Persons with Disabilities Act, it talks about right to transport 
of birth, you know, of children in villages to the nearest school, right, to free transport. Now, mainstream children, non-disabled children do not have such a right. Whereas in the West, they do to a certain extent. So in the sense, if there's a, if I'm in a village and I have a disabled child, there has to be a bus to cart this child to the nearest school, in the, on the statute book at least. Which means the main street children who are not disabled also can get into that bus. I'm just giving yeah. an analogy. I don't know if I make sense. It's a little complex, but it's clear enough, I guess. Yes, yeah, sir. I totally agree with you. Yes. And I, I forgot what was your first question that you actually put forth. I yeah, mean, I I, it was not a question. It was a okay. comment for discussion. Mm -hmm. This is all I okay. was saying that uh, the, uh, the paradox of uh, mainstream population not enjoying rights to sexuality, whereas today we are talking about the right to sexuality of uh, sexually marginalized communities. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah I totally agree with you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, sir, uh, I mean, uh, we have uh, Arjun, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Please. Yeah. Please, go ahead, sir. Are you referring to me? Yeah, definitely, sir. Yeah, I'm actually... <laughs> I'm surprised that I've been called to speak. But anyway, it's a very novel subject which I come across during the webinar. And uh, I feel quite informed about uh, this issue because I have uh, haven't thought much about this. Nor uh, I had uh, come across with any discussion with anybody on this uh, issue. But then, then it has been very illuminating for me to uh, hear the discussion from uh, so many speakers. And I think uh, henceforth, uh, uh, you, you just spoke what the majority of the audience today would like to reflect upon. I mean, that's that's what we want to dispel even like. I mean, we would like to have more and more discussions and deliberations on these things because uh, ignorance is bliss in George Orwell's uh, 1983 or I don't know what the novel is. Yes. No, actually, uh, as I said that uh, I'm uh, hearing the discussion on this uh, issue for the first time. I think uh, I'll try to be more the contributing or responsive to this issue as and when the time comes and circumstances come. And uh, uh, in some articles I have read that uh, as uh, I think Kalki said that uh, some of the uh, transgenders are compelled into the begging, which I see on the roads because I stay in Bombay. So on the signals, we find uh, many transgenders asking for the arms. So. I do the, understand now the gravity of the situation in which uh, they are compelled to do that. And uh, other aspect that uh, many of them are the exploited sexually, that again is uh, uh, something, It's I'm not totally surprised, but I think uh, this must be quite uh, happening at a large scale. Otherwise, uh, this issue may not have been discussed by Galki. So because she is into thick of this matter, so... Uh, I really understand uh, the gravity and much about uh, the, uh, what should I say, the situation, mindset of the children, whatever transgender, they being differentiated even at home among their friends and the community and at school level. It's really, I'm trying to understand the mindset of those people because see, all of us have go through the different level of uh, uh, self-respect and the self-image we have. But uh, listening all this discussion, I realized that how much uh, all the transgenders people will have to uh, must be trying to uh, have a self-respect for them in the society. And uh, otherwise, uh, uh, at a psychological level, uh, many people uh, are uh, uh, not uh, treated on the same level. But I think that. Situation of a transgender is. I think, sir, uh, I mean, uh, to put it, I mean, in, in very, very simple terms, I'd say that all of us are individuals, human beings, unless yes. and until we are able to appreciate each other as a human being. Correct. Forget about your uh, orientations or what. I mean, we have our own weaknesses, our own, uh, what you call, inhibitions or uh, our own, uh, what all, I mean, terminology that could be used. But end of the day, if you are able to see, is my brother or my sister or I mean, even that that terminology may not be right. Again, why should I use brother or sister for that matter? The fellow human being. Yes. If 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 that's the way we are able to see the other person, I think I believe uh, we'll be better off. 
Yeah, of course, of course. Because I think uh, they they deserve to be treated uh, equals like uh, all of us are. Incidentally, um, we do not uh, see them in our day-to-day -day life. But then uh, after the, today's discussion, I think my perspective will be uh, much different. Very good, sir. I mean, uh, it's indeed wonderful that at least uh, uh, we are able to understand that uh, uh, we got different perspectives or different different ways in which we have to approach an issue. We have okay. Sapna Parameshwar with a question. Uh, Sapna, are you there? Or uh, should we read it from the I mean, chat box? Uh, she has put a question. Uh, dear Kalki, uh, Kalki, can you see that in the chat? Yes, chat? I can. I can. Uh, so I was about now, if to we can unmute and uh, if you can, if you want to put it, you can. You are at liberty to do that, please. Um, my network is very poor, so. I mean, let us be. So very I can poor. read Don't... it and answer it. I can also read it and answer it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sure. um, so first question is, a recent survey in Kerala shows that 58% of transgender people are school dropouts without even having basic education. How can we overcome this issue as, yes. important, uh, as it is important in the successful rehabilitation of transgender people? Are there any studies ongoing on this or any recommendations to improve this scenario? Mm -hmm. This is something we already discussed, I think so, because the um, this transgender people are school dropouts because of the bullying at school. And uh, that can be changed only when schools introduce, uh, only schools introduce the education on LGBT rights, not only to the students, but even to the faculties. The faculties, the teachers have to be sensitized. The educators have to be educated. That way, uh, the dropout of a transgender or gender non-conforming kid or an LGBT could kid could be um, stopped or reduced, I think so, to put it in a nutshell. And of course, the uh, parent support is absolutely important for the continuous study, continuous uh, education of a uh, transgender or gender non-conforming child. Coming to a second question, even after many welfare and rehabilitation measures, we don't have separate washrooms in public for TGs. Uh, isn't it a problem, especially for trans women who mostly use uh, men's washroom? I think I differ on this because uh, it's again, I think it's an exclusion. Public washrooms are an exclusion for uh, transgender people. A separate public wash washrooms are an exclusion for transgender people. Mm. I think we should be allowed to use any bathroom that we want to. And I believe that uh, bathrooms should themselves be neutral, gen gender neutral. That is a long way to go. But uh, as of now, transgender women are very happy to use women's bathroom. Trans men are very happy to use men's bathroom. What we really need is again the sensitization to people that it's okay for a trans woman to use a women's bathroom. That is how uh, uh, it's, it's the same like what uh, we had discussion about a separate school for transgender people. Do we have a separate toilet for disabled people? We don't, we really don't. We do have, but within the cubicle, we do have. So I think we do have an exclusive room within the cubicle. Probably transgender people don't really need that separate cubicle within the toilets. It is inclusiveness we are talking about. And, uh, uh, Maybe it could be a proactive steps to try if it could be useful to have a separate washroom. But I would say um, I wouldn't recommend. I would rather go for a gender neutral bathroom. A male, female and gender neutral bathroom is what I would suggest. Sapna, I think uh, that would have answered your query. Um, uh, there is... Uh, one more question. Uh, uh, the last question, I mean, Kalki, can you see that? Uh, uh, the mobile's iPhone, I don't know the name. Uh, what is basis of definition of the term transgender is defined? What, what parameters were used for including or excluding different variants? Don't you think many are left out of the benefits? I think this is a broad question and you would have to actually, if you need to find the definition of uh, the term of transgender, 
you would definitely have to Google because the, there are variant definitions. But people who don't identify themselves as uh, who are born into the opposite, uh, who are born in one one sex uh, or in one gender of the body, but identify themselves as the opposite gender or basically identified as transgender within the transgender identities it's they, uh, I, mean, I, I do agree that's a too broad a question like i mean we we'll yes, go to munir yes. munir ahmed yeah please uh, sir my question is now we have the new rules 2020 rules in that there is option for registration and issuance of certificate of identity what is your take on it or are you satisfied with that or do you have an objection in issuing uh, a specialized class of certificate or is it going to again uh, differentiate you uh, uh, munir before kalki answers i'll just put that question to you how do you feel like yes. i mean do you feel that you're comfortable with that law or not no i'm not comfortable because uh, because as men and women uh, normal men and women we are not asked to go for some special registration and have right. a certificate of identity but now these new rules are asking them so that you know there again we are again differentiating them on the basis of a class absolutely i mean uh, so you the, you in the, fact answered the question but still i leave it open to kalki also uh, to uh, not that uh, i think no answer. that may that may be because okay. the supreme court when in uh, nalsas case said the separate gender will not be provided because they are not coming under man and woman separate gender will not be created and that they will not be fit in that ramesh sir then the, again we are going back no, to no, the binary no. in the sense like okay we say that it's it x or y and nothing else i mean that's very unfortunate e e equals equal all are equal some are more equal okay fine yes. okay your take on that sir again uh, the certificate of identity is uh, is against uh, the non such judgment goes against the non such judgment of self identity and it is also i think uh, uh it's it's a uh, it's uh, what to say like it's an invention of privacy for the transgender community as well i i am we uh, when we actually opposed a lot of classes in the transgender uh protection act of uh, 2019 this is also one of the things that we strongly um, opposed that this kind of uh, a certification shouldn't be required for us because number one it's very difficult to get and not every transgender person will be able to procure it and a medical certificate is also uh, uh, an important thing i don't know in what relevance they really need a medical uh, authority certificate this is all uh, a, a, not only a violation of privacy it's also against our our own rights i think so and not only that uh, how will the, the doctor will say that uh, you belong to particular this thing also will yeah, be there yeah that is what it is that it's it's the ignorance whoever framed this uh, transgender welfare bill has not framed it in consultation with the community activists i mean that's uh, 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 what's happening with uh, the new acts and everything i mean i have a difference of opinion with the new consumer protection act somebody uh, <laughs> sat in some library and <laughs> written it i don't know uh, but uh, we have rajeshri rao uh, please raji uh, hello good evening everybody what i good feel evening. is the younger generation like my children and you know their friends they have accepted tgs like they are supportive of them but that uh, older generation like my generation have have that left have still still left with that mindset they are not accepting the change that is that makes it little more difficult and uh, the thing about somebody said having a special school for the transgenders i think that is not acceptable to anybody it, that will be more like uh, sort of stigmatizing them in the long run uh, they should be included in the main, mainstream only and and when the uh, school curriculum say in the 7th or 8th standards teaches them about uh, teaches everybody about uh, sexual behaviors or sexual orientation of people this should be also included in the curriculum to sensitize the younger children a uh, younger lot about, i mean the children school going children about the uh, other genders uh, this will uh, sort of in the long run bring more acceptance from the grassroots levels you know then coming to our older uh, to a college and you know uh, sort of uh, victimizing the tgs or uh, sort of looking down upon them that that will help i think socially that should help uh, uh, in a in a say acceptance among later generations and uh, that will also 
reduce the uh, levels of torture that uh, transgenders go through from the early childhood onwards if they should be accepted as friends by all the peers rashmi madam i think uh, we should start thinking not by using the term they in the sense like there is they, no okay, they okay yeah i am sorry i am sorry i take it back yeah we yeah that's right we oh this this Thank i have you. i have seen this change uh, i should mention my daughter because once we were in new york and we we had a transgender in the immigration queue behind us and she said mummy what is wrong with him nahi the person was dressed as a woman and he was maybe 6 and a half or 7 uh, feet tall and so she said, what is wrong with him so i said uh, i said arundhati this is how it is don't worry and then when now when i when i see her she is she is got a friend like uh, who is closest friend of hers who is uh, who is from the community but she she is like a part and uh, like as a buddy like you know they discuss each and everything on 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 earth it's like that so there is no differentiation there is so much acceptance now but i have seen that over a period you know it was Excellent. from a childhood to to now i'm talking of that way but then this is how it should be with all of us we should we have to accept everybody as a human being as you said sir absolutely thank you thank you, you rashmi ma'am uh, i mean end of the day uh, what we can say or we are, what uh, the take home message i i believe from this platform would be that we are all essentially human beings homo sapiens right uh, so uh, there will be divisions subdivisions and uh, what you call categorizations it has been always been the so i mean it's not as if i mean uh, uh, whether you can assimilate or whether you can accept is another story but end of the day i'll say that as long as we are all human beings i'll just hand over the mic to prem for the concluding remarks well kalki that was a really wonderful articulation because i would uh, just like to address one of the questions which was put by one of the participants as to the definition of transgender whether it was all inclusive so it is already there in the 2019 statute section 2 it has defined and it has taken everything and uh, secondly with regard to another question which was put by sapna i think the second question regarding use of uh, public toilets mm. see this has been addressed in the nalsa judgment finally see the sixth point which the court uh, actually it was a sixth direction which was given to the center and the state to take the proper measures to provide separate public toilets this is where the judgment now as we know that navtej singh case of 2018 that is a very historical development as far as uh, the lgbtq community is concerned because it was on that particular day that blew the very life of constitutionality for their community who were subjected to centuries of uh, condemnation and of course you had the nalsa judgment during 2014 and by way of these two judgments actually the apex court had uh, laid the foundation to confer upon the non binary community a bundle of basic human rights but in my opinion the legislature has miserably failed to sustain with the developments in the society and despite another path breaking judgment in uh, justice putraswami 2017 our laws still remain hostile and prejudicial towards the lgbt community in various ways one of the reason is that there exists as uh, kalki has put it a yawning gap between the legislative and the judicial development of the lgbt community laws in our country of course the court goes on to hold that a queer person is entitled to the fullest protection of the laws without any discrimination by the state and this is 
certainly it would lay the very basis for all the future challenges to other discriminatory laws which we see as declaration number 1 in the nalsa judgment of course the greatest positive change has been in bringing the issue of sexuality into the public space for a debate without any fear of a reprisal by any authorities but there is however a very very long way to go now as we know the parliament has passed a statute the transgender persons protection of rights act of 2019 which in my humble opinion and it's a very problematic statute because it does not even allow for self determination of the transgender status and this particular statute it does not even offer the reservation in the public employment and the education which has been directed by the supreme court judgment and i think that uh, transgender activists like uh, swadhi bidan barua then grace banu and uh, five others they have already challenged uh, this particular statute in the supreme court by way of article 32 and petition now there is an urgent need to remedy this kind of draconian provisions in the statute because as of now i think our country does not have a comprehensive anti discrimination law because constitution of course prohibits uh, i mean uh, discrimination Equal. discrimination but kindly see this particular mandate applies only to the state which you have in article 12 on the and the instrumentalities which again you see described in article 12 but any private sector can discriminate with impunity in any matters let it be employment let it be health let it be education let it be anything <clears throat> and the saddest part is that even the constitutional courts have not yet woken up to this particular problem which materially it would affect the lives of this particular community and i think practically as uh, kalkeer pointed out during 2014 there was a census where 4 lakh 20 thousand was the number which he believes may be four or five times bigger now whatever that be even let us assume it is a uh, 20 lakhs now i would feel this particular number of the populace of this community maybe because our uh, legislature feels that uh, the number of this particular community it is not sufficient to make a very significant electoral or significant to make some societal impact so i would say better it's uh, we have to force the alliances to voice all these marginalized movements because we can then coalesce into something which is greater than each of the members individually anyway that was a uh, absolutely fantastic way of addressing kalki that is a uh, really good thank you so much thank, thank you prem and uh, uh, as we come to the end of the 215th session tomorrow uh, we have uh, uh, mrs prerna bushan uh, who is pursuing her masters in international business in the university of helsinki finland will be addressing on the topic a comparative analysis of uh, rights of data that's uh, uh, tomorrow uh at 10:30 in the morning Chapter, just just one minute i yeah. think uh, i look at dilip is having some question because he has put it in the chat box dilip sir please go ahead so, i'm sorry i'm sorry no no why should you be sorry i mean we are sorry <laughs> okay good evening good evening all my my sir my, maybe it is so frivolous but still i think in a question where how to how to handle the family familial exclusion exclusion in the family or from the school or bullying in the school or from any part of the corner of society should there a, a, a act to prevent cruelty against transgenders would have been more purposive and uh, useful rather than an act to protection of their rights the lips are i i leave to kalki to answer but i believe that uh, uh, uh prevention etc unless and until there is a social education and uh, i mean uh, the way in which the society reflects uh, 
uh, it'll be a useless enactment. I don't know. I mean, I leave to Kalki to answer that. Sir, I would like to, uh, um, if there is a rephrasing of the question, it will be much better for me to understand. I think so. I uh, like it. Okay. okay. Now we have a, we have an act to protect the rights of consumers. Yeah. But instead of that, or along with it, if an act is promulgated by the legislature, preventing cruelty against transgenders, either inside from inside the family or outside, from any quarter, yeah. and bringing into penal justice, would have been more. I mean, uh, we would have made more inroads into alleviating the grievance of exclusion. I think, uh, in a way, yes, sir. I think it will definitely. Uh, Cruelty is not about hurting someone. Cruelty uh, is can be from denying somebody's rights. It's also cruel, of course. Emotional and uh, mental also. Of so course, because of course. Penal, penal so that, for me, penal provisions yeah, for me, I think it's statute. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in that way, I think uh, uh, this kind of an act that prevents cruelty to transgender teenagers or transgender children will be useful, I think so. Oh, in some act, if you nice. want, you can add some, some nice. more uh, offenses in the right. yes, act itself. Yes. That will be enough. Yes. That, that is why it has been challenged because this particular statute does not take care fully the rights of this uh, community. Ramshu, sir, I mean, uh, how far will the rod uh, be of use? No, that's it. But that every, no, every, no, law, no, 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 Shyam, no. every law provides for that. Say, penal, penal say for, example, no, for example, you are 498A. Though 498A case is filed, no, normally it is an obstacle for reunion. Sometimes. Sometimes Sir, it I mean, is. These are the provisions no. which are being most misused. That is That is a different thing. When the social uh, reality requires some uh, some measure to prevent that, nothing yeah. wrong in uh, including new, new type of offenses. But only thing is when you are dealing with that, how far you are careful in dealing with that and how it is being used, that's a matter yeah, of interpretation yeah. and uh, depending on evidence, etc. Because uh, the rape was there earlier also, rape was also misused. No, this is, right. is always that there. Can we can yeah. actually believe, sir, and what Kalki said, oh, okay, fine, let us let there be a statute, a purity statute. Then what is the way forward? Because uh, that, by that, by that, at least the cruelty from the side of the family, at least in fear of what the consequence would be. Yes. There will be there will be a number limitation in their number reduction in their number. And if you have a duty to maintain your uh, parents, and yes. if that can be penalized, <laughs> why not? <laughs> See, senior citizens. We require a law to maintain our parents. I mean, we do have one. So I mean, uh, anything can be excused. Absolutely. Yes, because there is another aspect to that also. For a person to claim protection of right, he should be a major. He should approach the court or the authority. Yes. But for a cruelty, the prevention of cruelty, any person who comes to know about the cruelty being meted out can set the law in motion. It's correct because we don't have the adequate laws. And yes. that's why this Transgender Act of 2019 that has been challenged. I think there are two or three public interest litigations before the Supreme Court. So the, I think uh, the activists should be, I mean, protesting for yes, that particular statute is wholly ineffective. They live, sir. I mean, is it a legal remedy or a social remedy that we are looking at? Uh, but both, both. And uh, having an act of prevent cruelty against transgenders from any quarter, from any exactly. quarter, starting so, from home. Exactly, exactly. See, that is why I, uh, I have a tool because, as far as the constitution is concerned. You can impose it only against the state and the instrumentalities of the state. You cannot impose it against a private person, saying that my rights have been infringed. He is violating my fundamental rights. Cannot be invoked. See, this is the dilemma which we are going to face at a late point of time. Premier sir, correct me if yes. I am wrong. As Kalki said, most of this thing starts in school and in the colleges. So you are now going to have juveniles who are going to be sent to the juvenile justice home. See, the see thing is that, that would be another problem. No, see, it is not only in this particular community. See, every human being, because this is not told by me, this has been uh, so told by Megari, who was a great jurist, 
Megari, who was a master of rules in uh, England, because right from uh, even prior to your birth and even after your death, you are governed by laws. Yes. Anyone, any human being. So normally, because these laws, uh, we can implement effective laws, we can enact effective laws, we can implement them. It is for the legislature, it is for the wise judiciary, it is for the society to make the suggestions. Because uh, how many of us who are part and parcel of the society, uh, have we raised voice for this community? Answer would be an emphatic no. Only after this judgment, we have realized that they are all having some significance. <coughs> right? Because at that point of time, we also we didn't have that uh, approach, even from our side. Yeah. We were, we were part of the society. Prem sir, exposure will will help you in a lot of in, in, in a lot Absolutely. of things. Unless and until you know and, what and you are exposed to it, you're not going to. Correct. Correct. Like today, like me, from since I'm exposed to this from day one in my in my field, like I brought it home to my children also and said, like these things do exist. Uh, now sir, them, uh, it is just like saying blissful ignorance. Or yes. I mean exposure to all these things. That, that that that's exactly what we have been trying. So. Correct. Uh, what I can say, like as we come to the end of the 215th session of uh, legal empowerment through interaction lecture series, I I would believe that I mean this is one of the wonderful uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, lectures that we had. And yes. until Prem, you want to add something or actually I would say that this was uh, this was the best lecture we had because it was uh, exceptionally good. I would say so. Kalki, all the credits to you and. Uh, uh, I, I should have, but also, I mean, ma'am, uh, for your uh, wonderful uh, introductory remarks. And uh, uh, as we conclude, I'd like to thank uh, Justice Ram Kumar, sir, Justice uh, Ramushan, sir, Justice Jay Shankar Nambia, sir, and all of you wonderful participants for being part and parcel of this out of the box thought. In the sense, like, let us not be confined with some sort of uh, uh, preconceived notions and things like that. Let us think. I mean, what is wrong in that? Let us discuss. Let us let us let us see the different avenues, different uh, vistas wherein uh, it requires constructive and collaborative, what you call uh, interventions, critical even at times. Yes. Thank you very much. Till we meet again tomorrow, ten thirty. Yes. Please do take care and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.